Good day, two-wheeled friends. Zach Cords here with RevZilla, and welcome to another episode of Daily Rider, where we learn about motorcycles as we ride. Our guest today, the Honda Navi. And just looking at it, you might have some pretty obvious questions, right? How fast does it go? Is it a motorcycle? Is it a scooter? How does it compare to the Honda Grom, or the Honda Ruckus for that matter? Well, one thing's for sure, it's for sale at your local dealer for $1,800, and I think that makes asking and answering all those previous questions all the more important. So that's just what we're gonna do on my ride to work, and I think I'm ready. Are you ready? Let's go. <laughs> Okie dokie, everybody. Here we go, Honda Navi. Daily Rider. So, uh, one quick caveat I want to get out of the way uh, in the beginning is that I'm hoping there are some uh, newer riders, perhaps, who are less familiar with motorcycles, less familiar with Daily Rider, that are tuning in because of the Navi's uh, entry-level nature. So, I think some of the points I'm going to make today might seem a little basic for you usual Daily Rider viewers, but I hope that it uh, helps encourage people who are less familiar with um, our little community here and if you happen to be a new rider hopefully some of this makes sense and if not uh fire away in the comments hopefully i or one of the lovely members of the daily rider community will help you out so jumping right in to the navi um actually i think what would make more sense come to think of it is if we just turn it around and we face the, the other side toward the sun because that's the side that's got all the interesting stuff on it as you can see uh, there's a kickstand and a center stand we're going to put it up on the center stand because it's easier to start that way um, so you have a 109.2 cc uh, single cylinder engine in there. There's a carburetor as well, which is kind of rare in this day and age, but uh, obviously this sucker's built to a price, so that's what you get. It does have an electric start, but there's a Kickstarter as well, in case you're feeling frisky or something. There's a little storage compartment here, because it's kind of a scooter, basically, right? Um, so you can put a bunch of stuff in there. I'm told you can fit 24 cans of beer. That seems ambitious, if I'm honest, but... Uh, Anyway, it is, uh, how many liters is it, Zach? I don't know. I just put it on the screen. There you go. <laughs> um, so it's, you know, there's, there's room to put some stuff in there. It's not uh, super spacious, but uh, it's useful. Aside from that, there aren't a whole lot of really spicy features because as I said, it's a, you know, a bit of a bargain bike. One thing I do think is interesting, you'll notice that there are two cables going to the front brake, which is one too many normally for a drum front brake like this, but, uh, the reason in this case is that it is linked to the rear brake. So when you press on the rear brake lever, which is on the other side of the bike, um, it at some point engages the front brake as well, uh, which means you can't stomp on the back brake and skid to a stop uh, like a sweet BMX rider or whatever. <laughs> so those of you wanting to do that, you won't be able to, unfortunately. I do think it's kind of an interesting kind of workaround for the fact that the brakes are really, really basic. Other than that, just to, just to step back a little bit, it is basically a scooter powertrain, right? So that 110cc engine is all linked with a continuously variable transmission or CVT. So there is no shifter on the left side of the bike. There's no clutch lever on the left side of the bike. It's just like a scooter. You twist it, you go, as we will find out. Speaking of twisting and going, I guess let's, uh, let's twist and go. Flick the sucker on, fire it up. Obviously makes a, just a vicious exhaust note. <laughs> you can basically barely hear it. Uh, and there you have it. The Honda Navi in grasshopper green, ready to rumble. So I'm just gonna put both my foot on the foot pegs, twist this sucker, and we're gonna ride to work. Giddy up. All right, first order of business as usual is to talk about specifications. Uh, but first, what we have to do is turn off our usual daily rider route because that takes the freeway and head down these uh, surface streets here, which will uh, probably be more appropriate for the Honda Navi. Not a freeway machine. All right. So, the specs won't take long on this sucker. It holds 9 tenths of a gallon of gas, 0 0.9 gallons. And with the tank full on the Daily Rider scales, the Navi weighed in at 234 pounds, which is pretty small for a motorcycle, but pretty heavy considering what a toy it seems like, right? <laughs> um, I mean, that's as much as a high performance dual sport. So, you know, it's a little bit odd that way. But the good news is the seat height is 30 inches, 30.1, I think. And that means it is 
exceedingly approachable, as you'd probably expect from basically a 110cc scooter, which is what the uh, underpinnings of the Navi involve. And a quick friendly reminder that all the specs that I mention in American Imperial values are listed in metric in the description of the video as well. Something that you might find surprising about the Navi is that it's pretty comfortable. I'm six foot two and uh, about 200 pounds and it actually fits me pretty well. It doesn't feel cramped at all. It feels like a small motorcycle, don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm as comfy as I would be on a full-size bike, but uh, there's plenty of room. My legs aren't cramped at all. The pegs are pretty far forward. And then your hands just sort of sit right above your knees. Back is basically straight. The seat is not bad. I certainly don't feel as ridiculous as I probably look on this bike. Because <laughs> uh, if you're over six feet tall, you know, you probably look a little bit silly on, uh, on a tiny little bike like this. When you come up to a stop light in California, you're allowed to split to the front of the line here. And I'm gonna goose it wide open throttle. And I'm gonna get away from that semi truck because uh, they also accelerate pretty slowly, often. And I also accelerated ahead of that uh, Nissan Rogue or whatever it was there. And that's uh, indicative of the experience I've had on the Honda Navi. You can, you're, you're, you're free to, you know, get in and out of traffic as you, as aggressive as you want to be. Uh, if someone leaves a stoplight or a stop sign uh, and they're in a hurry of any kind, um, they'll probably out accelerate you. It doesn't take much. You know, even someone who's a little bit late for work in a Corolla is probably going to leave you in the dust. So you definitely want to be a little bit careful with how much acceleration you have on tap. Uh, example, Nissan Rogue passed me back now that we're at top speed, 50 miles an hour. Oh, I got it back. Oh, they chickened out in the turn, I think. <laughs> go, Navi, go! This section road is particularly bumpy. <laughs> which is a good time to talk about the Honda Navi suspension, which is not particularly advanced, as you can probably guess, based on the size and price of this machine. Uh, but, you know, it does pretty well, I think. Uh, a little underdamped, in my opinion. A little, little springy in the back. The thing that hurts it the most with this terrain is just the size of the wheels. It has a 12 inch front wheel and a 10 inch rear wheel. It's pretty small. You know, those wheels hit the bumps a little bit harder. Uh, I did have a question on social media about, you know, I heard the wheels are so small that it doesn't feel stable at 35 miles an hour or whatever. Well, we're cruising along here at 45 and it's perfectly stable. No weird shimmies or shakes, just trucking. It feels fine. Someone also asked about cruise control. Pretty sure it was a sarcastic question that I got on Instagram. Does it have cruise control? But kind of. I mean, set it and forget it. I'm wide open. Cruises set at 50, basically. So, you know, kind of kind of the same thing, right? Oh, catching up to a semi now. I got to <laughs> disengage cruise control, turn on blinker control, and merge control. This seems like as good a time as any to talk about fuel mileage and range. Um, I think Honda's claims are something like 100 miles to the gallon or 110 miles to the gallon. I have not been getting 100 miles to the gallon. I've been getting between 70 and 80 miles to the gallon, which is, uh, you know, pretty darn good, I think, uh, certainly. But not doesn't have the same ring to it, does it, as 90 or 110 or something like that. Uh, and that could be because it's carbureted and, and not fuel injected, so a little bit less efficient, maybe. Or it could be that I'm just keeping up with traffic, going normal speed, but I'm almost wide open, which, you know, uh, is never good for, for fuel mileage. What that means practically is 75 miles of range or something like that, right? 80, 80 miles a gallon and it holds nine tenths of a gallon. I've had to go to reserve um, at about 50 miles, usually 50 or 60 miles. Um, a reserve it has a petcock. So for you kids who <laughs> out there have only ever ridden fuel injected motorcycles, um, the petcock is the thing that a uh, little valve that controls um, the gas flowing from the gas tank to the carburetor and uh, to the engine and so basically it has a reserve function right so when you run out you flip it to reserve you have another few miles to get gas before you're actually out um, but uh, it does have a fuel gauge so you know that helps as well okie dokie this is the off-ramp from the freeway where we usually come for daily rider and now we're turning right into the neighborhood and we'll give the old Navi a test on the stop sign challenge that's where we try to come to a complete stop and then take off from the stop sign without putting feet down.
Here we go. Attempt number one. Ellie oop. Ah. <laughs> I did it. Wasn't great, but I did it. And let me say, before we put too much weight on the stop sign challenge, the Navi is exceedingly easy to ride. It's little, it's short, it's compact, it's everything small. You know, if you can ride a child's bicycle, you can ride a Honda Navi. Seriously, it's that easy. How easy is it, Zach? Oh, look at that. Nice footless stop. Very satisfying. But to sprinkle in some actual bike review notes, um, I think one thing that the Navi takes uh, some flack for is being basically a scooter, right? I mean, it is a scooter. It has a scooter powertrain. Uh, it doesn't have a clutch like a motorcycle. It operates like a scooter, but you do have a gas tank between your knees. And as silly as this might sound, I think that that actually contributes to it feeling like a little motorcycle, even if there's no clutch lever. Um, and, and slow speed stuff like, you know, a stop sign challenge like this, uh, as an example of that, you feel a little bit more connected to the machine, I think, in a sort of motorcycle way, if that makes sense. And, uh, you know, as, as good as scooters are for um, low speed maneuverability and, and low center gravity and that kind of thing, uh, the Navi really, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a slightly different experience in a way that I appreciate. Okie doke, on to Lover's Lane, time for the passenger report. And uh, it's actually quite good. I was very impressed with the passenger accommodations of the Honda Navi. I rode a little bit with someone on the back. Uh, it doesn't change the, the handling too much. It doesn't feel particularly heavy or weird with someone on the back. It felt fine to me. And then I sat back there for a little while and it's actually pretty comfortable. You know, with two like full size people on there, the passenger seat might feel a little tiny bit cramped. You might ask the person on, up front to scoot up a little bit. But other than that, there's plenty of leg room easy place to sit. There's a little grab rail luggage rack thing. I don't actually know what it is, but you can hold on to it. <laughs> and yeah, it didn't even really affect the performance of the bike that much, to be honest. Uh, I didn't climb any big hills or anything, but it still went 45, 50 miles an hour, even with uh, someone on the back. So yeah, so I, I think full marks for passenger accommodations, realistically, considering the, the expectations and uh, situation that the Navi presents itself in, I think. <laughs> um, so hopefully you find that satisfying. As we get into the twisty road section here, just one more note on passenger accommodations that uh, I'd like to throw in here. A little editorial, a little opinion piece here that uh, you don't have to pay attention to if you don't want to. But uh, the Navi is a great bike to introduce someone to motorcycling if you're in the dating game or whatever. I think, uh, I, I think you'll have better luck, let's just say, no matter who you're trying to attract, if you pick them up on a Navi rather than some sort of loud, fast motorcycle. It's non-threatening, it's fun. I don't know, just a thought. All right, we're peeling into some curves now. <laughs> no traffic ahead of us. Really bailing, look at us go. Yeah. Go little Navi. Uh, you know, twisty road sections are not gonna be your primary goal, I don't think, on a Navi. Um, but uh, it works fine. Like I said, the suspension is very unrefined. The wheels are small. You get, you get a lot of feedback from bumps and ripples and stuff like that but uh, you know if you've got a little uh, couple little switchbacks near your neighborhood or something like that it would certainly I think whet your appetite for actual twisty road motorcycle riding I don't know I'm having fun I got a smile on my face right now that means something right oh we just touched something down just then okay well, you know in general I don't uh, find myself dragging parts on the on the Navi really it's uh, you know, even going through intersections, leaning over, that kind of thing, it's, it seems fine. If you really start, you don't want to take it to like a car track or anything. If you think you're going to do like a, any kind of performance day with this bike, I, I wouldn't recommend that. I think you want, you want, uh, I don't know, a Grom or a, a, a CRF 50 with some road tires on it or something like that at the very least. Last big turn, cruising through on the Navi. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I had that much fun on this road. Normally we're like stuck behind cars. We're like, ah, I wish I was on a racetrack or whatever. Not on the Navi. All right, we're coming downhill. We're going 50 miles an hour. We're gonna experiment with maximum braking here on the Navi. And go. Oh, not bad, right? I'm pretty impressed. You even hear the tire going. Doesn't have ABS, so 
do not attempt what I just did uh, if you're, you know, on wet pavement or dirt or anything. You know what? Don't attempt what I just did in general. Wouldn't recommend it. But it was a good brake test, I think. More to the point and more accurately, I should say, the Navi's brakes are pretty bad for, for motorcycle brakes. You know, like, I mean, especially compared to a Grom that has a, a disc brake, you know, it's not that good, not even close. So don't expect it to be. Um, but uh, but the, the sort of linked system I talked about earlier where, you know, if you hit the rear brake, the front brake engages a little bit. I think that's good. Um, sort of like quasi safety system for riding in an environment like this. You can plan to use the back brake a fair amount. And, um, you know, with the front brake, you just have to be stern and cautious <laughs> as you do with uh, most drum brakes. So as we get near the end of the daily rider route, sometimes we reflect at this point and uh, try to digest what we've learned about all these uh, topics we've discussed along the way. And, uh, you know, I think the, the takeaway here is that the Honda Navi is a scooter underneath. It's not a quote unquote real motorcycle. However, it is a cycle with a motor engine <laughs> and it's viable transportation it's built to a price a hundred percent it's got drum brakes it's got a carburetor it's got a petcock it's got uh you know a 10 inch rear wheel it's got some kind of weird things that you're not necessarily gonna have to deal with um if you buy again a quote-unquote real motorcycle but again it's viable transportation this is fine 45 50 miles an hour zipped right along kept up with traffic uh got 80 miles a gallon we got some storage down there we could have had lunch in there or uh or cargo of some kind <laughs> and i think that that's that's there's something to be said for that that honda is producing these machines and putting them for sale in honda dealerships it's not an 1800 dollars vespa knockoff from china it's a Honda with a warranty. And I think that that's kind of cool that Honda decided to release this into the, into the market. It's a weird place for a bike like this, the United States, but I like it. All right, so what happens if you want to ride it down a, a dirty, dusty road, say? Well, good question. Should we turn off trash control? <laughs> it's already off comes from the factory. I'm gonna get out of this wheel track to make this uh, dirty, dusty road a little more realistic. Uh, if you did have any cans of beer in the uh, storage compartment there, it'd probably be pretty foamy by the time you got where you were going. But uh, look at us go, trucking down, the, trucking down the dirt road. No big deal, right? It's actually, you know, that the slightly soft suspension is actually kind of nice in this stuff. <laughs> All right, where's our jump? Sighting it in, sighting it in. Come on, Navi! Huh. <laughs> oh, uh, locking up the front wheel. Oh boy. Whew. That was a wild ride. <laughs> but a surprisingly good on the dirt road, actually, I thought. I don't know. It's a, it's, a, it's a bike of many talents, the Honda Navi, apparently. All right, everybody. So this is the section where we usually experiment with uh, whether or not a bike will do a wheelie. And... Um, we're gonna have to slow down and make sure we don't get hit from behind or anything. But uh, yeah, if you lean back a little bit and give it some gas. Oh, look at us go. Oh, look at us go. Yeah, Navi. Whoa, whoa. Oh boy. What a rush. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. It helps if you have like a slight upslope. That's always always good for learning how to wheelie. If you can go uphill a little bit to you know shave some of the speed and. Helps him out. It's a hot tip there from Zach, the amateur wheelie artist. <laughs> anyway, I mean, you know, wheelies, dirt road, uh, 80 miles a gallon, onboard storage. I mean, <laughs> any questions, BMW GS owners or Kawasaki Versus owners out there? <laughs> uh, now coming up to this intersection here, we can see we can back it in. I know what the answer is. Uh, no, you can't back it in. Back brake is extremely feeble and it also engages the front brake there with a little linked system. Good for safety, 
not so good for acting like a hooligan. Just like ABS, actually. <laughs> Alrighty, coming into the parking lot of work here. Uh, loyal Daily Rider viewers will know that I'm probably pretty excited about this, right? This is the U-Turn Challenge. Oh my goodness, we don't have any parking spaces. Okay, we do, we have one here at the end. This is good. Um, so we're gonna line up this parking space here. We're gonna see how quickly we can do a U-Turn. Uh, touching our feet down here. So we're gonna get real close to this trailer, this side of the parking space. Uh, come on. Almost one, I guess one and a half. One and a half parking spaces. That's pretty good. I mean, it is a very, very agile, twisty little machine. <laughs> Makes sense. Small, good steering sweep, that kind of thing. All right, kids, that was it. Honda, Navi, Daily Rider in the books. Did you have, like, I really hope you had fun. I had a blast. That was awesome. <laughs> We even did a willy for crying out loud. Oh, I forgot to point out one uh, very important performance aspect. Single-sided swing arm. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Ducati Panigale, eat your heart out. Uh, a couple revs of the engine here. Probably not gonna impress anybody at bike night, but um, you know, you might impress people at bike night with the fun factor or the MSRP. I don't know. I don't know what kind of bike nights you go to. All right, we're gonna jump into some Instagram questions now. Um, you yeah, submitted some good ones as usual. Right off the bat, we're gonna start with uh, Amin, Amin Jay-Z, maybe? Not sure if, how to say your name, apologize. Amin asks, how does it compare to the Grom? Got this question ad nauseum. We talked about it a little bit, right? But here's the breakdown. A Honda Grom is a motorcycle in miniature. It has a transmission, it has a clutch, uh, it has a disc brake, it has an LCD dash, it has motorcycle things. It's a little motorcycle. This is a scooter, kind of dressed up like a motorcycle and offering some of the benefits of both. And it is much cheaper than a Grom. That's the bottom line. Be angry if you want to about how both are available at Honda dealers and why would they do that? And uh, Sure, if, if you want to be uh, upset about that stuff, totally fine, but that's the breakdown. Uh, next question is a technical one from Connor Smith who asks, how much more difficult is a carburetor to deal with for someone totally new to bikes and bike maintenance? Do you think that difference will be enough to drive potential new riders away? This is a good question, Connor. Um, and, uh, you know, it's subjective, right? Because some new riders are sort of like, I want to learn how to be a mechanic. How do I do that? And that's this is a good way to do it. You know, it's a very simple bike. The carburetor is not too hard to get to. And you'll be able to learn to work on your bike in the same way that you'll learn to ride <laughs> uh, in sort of a simple way. There's certainly potential for someone to be like, oh, I just want it to be turnkey and work and not have to ask any questions about it for years to come. And it might be a little too rudimentary for that, time will tell. Um, but I think that the bottom line is, that's the nice thing about it being a Honda, is that you get it at a Honda dealer, you get all, all the benefits of that as well. It's not like you got it mail order um, from some company you've never heard of and you just have to deal with any problem that crops up, hopefully. The support of a large company like Honda helps a person get through or over any of the hurdles that would come up in that regard. Okay, a couple fun questions here. Navi's a fun bike. We'll do a couple fun questions. One from Riley Nickel who says, based on your opinion only, would a mother enjoy a day ride on the Navi, perhaps paired with a CBR? <laughs> well, I don't know this hypothetical mother, but yes, absolutely. Are you kidding me? How inviting and fun and cute and warm and welcoming and all those other mother words is the Honda Navi. Uh, ultimately, it's excellent. I will say, pairing it with a CBR, uh, you know, a higher performance Honda motorcycle, might not be a great idea. I think the best way to enjoy a Navi is going to be with other people on uh, Honda Groms, on Honda Ruckuses, on Kawasaki Z125s, on, uh, you know, little scooters, that kind of thing. Because, you know, oftentimes your enjoyment is affected by what the people around you are riding. So I would keep that in mind. So as long as uh, the person on the CBR waits for the for the mother, then yeah, why not? Next question, Simon PX asks, does it fit into an average car or elevator? <laughs> elevator? Yeah, why not? An average full-size elevator, I think so. Um, average car, you know, uh, nah, uh, maybe, you know, like maybe a station wagon or something, probably, or a, I don't know. It's kind of big, it's, it's, it's big enough that it's not nothing. I mean, it's a 235 pound, lump of machine 
Um, and you know, uh, what is this? It's probably 40 something inches high with the mirrors. So if you take the mirrors off, you might be able to get into the back of a Honda Element or something like that. Does that make sense? I don't know. It's not as toy-like as it might look uh, as far as weight and size, but push into an elevator, get it up to your building. Yeah, why not? Tell them I said it was okay. Next question is from BTG Dale. I really like this question. <laughs> uh, BTG Dale asks, why as a grown man with decades of experience on most forms of motorcycle, do I still enjoy reading about riding, buying and modding really objectively shite little motorcycles? <laughs> um, because you're an enthusiast, Dale, you should own it. It means that you love all things two wheels, and it means uh, that you are a pillar of the motorcycling community. That's what I think it means, Dale. So you hold your head high. You hear me? <laughs> my last question is from Gromanson, and I like this question because it's so weird. Given your love of the term spicy, describe this bike as a Mexican food or dish. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. Let me think about it while this truck goes by. This Roadster truck. Raider Nation. Okay. Um, 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 um. The Honda Navi is the cheese quesadilla of motorcycling. It's something that everybody can understand and everyone can enjoy. It's just not complicated. It's not going to challenge people who have lots of experience in that sphere. It's the sort of baseline. It's the entry level. And I love cheese quesadillas. I think they're delicious. So I hope, <laughs> I hope that helps uh, you understand the Honda Navi, Gromanson, or perhaps some other people as well. Thank you, as usual, everybody, for your Instagram questions. It was awesome. I got a ton of them. Um, so last thing left to do on the Daily Ride, as we know, is put this sucker on the Daily Rider leaderboard. So let's run inside and do that real quick, and then I'll let you get on with the rest of your day. Here we go. Hi everybody, here we are inside the Revzilla shop and the Daily Rider leaderboard. Uh, if you happen to be new here, uh, main Daily Rider leaderboard, everything in this season. Uh, this season is 2022 calendar year. Old bikes over here, AKA Daily Rider classics and uh, the archive board here. Season one, 2020 and 2021 bikes on this board. And in the hopper, we've got the Honda Navi. Um, only other two bikes we got this season, BMW S1000 RR and Triumph Tiger Sport 660. The real question I suppose is how the Navi will stack up to other small bikes, uh, bikes that didn't finish all that well. Not all of them are small. <coughs> R18, but Super 73 RX, that's an electric bicycle. Um, Dumb and Dumber Hog, uh, no, the Navi's better than that. Uh, Cake Calc, um, $15,000 electric motorcycle. The Navi's better than that in some ways. Uh, so either way, we're gonna put it down here on the board, I think. But where does it stack up here? Better than a Harley Lowrider S? No, not really, no. Better than a Kawasaki KLX 300 SM? No way. Uh, better than a Super 73? Better than a Cake Calc Ant. It's so much cheaper. Onboard storage, Honda dealer network. If you're gonna like huck off jumps, then the cake calc is better, certainly. But I'm giving the nod to the Navi. The Navi gets the nod. You heard it here first. Third bike on the board for 2022. Um, down a little bit lower on the list, fair enough. But uh, all things considered, a great daily rider. And I had a blast. Well, you know, like I said, wheelies and onboard storage. That's not a combo you get all the time. <laughs> so. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Daily Rider. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you for all your Instagram questions, all your support, all your comments, all your views on the YouTubes. Um, let's, let's keep rocking in 2022, shall we? All right. Thanks, everybody. Hope you learned something. Hope you had fun. Hope to see you next time. Ride safe. Look out. I could, if they just had a little more room under that bed, I could pull off some Fast and the Furious kind of thing, you know? Scoot under there. Change lanes. I don't know why I would want to do that. But I'm just saying, the Navis, they handle so well, I guess I could. Right, let's get to the front of this line.